Hey, man. Jo. What's up? I'm not sure trying to eat young things really helped. What, what's that? I'm not sure eating's really helped. <laughs> My stomach feels ill. And feel more tired. Two more people to do up to. Mm-hmm. And then we have completed the uh, presentations. <laughs> oh. Getting too old for this shit. Yeah. I emailed Mark the new link earlier, so it should be with him. Yeah, I haven't heard anything from him, so I guess he's going to make it. Yeah, yeah. As before, I have no filler material. Really? <laughs> hey, Mark. Hey, how's it going? Hey, good. How are you? Yeah, not bad. Hey, guys. How you guys going? Have you uh, have you slept at all yet? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh God. We had a we had a short break uh, just now with no one on because we've had a couple of gaps, cancellations, and been uh been left us a little while ago we ran out of material after our segment so just uh got yourself and one more speaker and then it's done okay nice one <laughs> excuse me but yeah we're pretty uh we're pretty spent now yeah i mean you, you guys are doing great i can't believe how much money money's been raised and uh yeah it's such a good cause yeah, as well. i'm really really pleased it's uh got a nice total i think it was up to just under eight thousand when garrett updated is that right yeah 7880 yeah, that's awesome. It's pretty cool. All right, cool. So, um, yeah, I do have some slides put together uh, that I put together for uh, some link building stuff. Um, all right, let's see how I do this. Uh, the screen sharing uh, stuff. 
Yeah, I think we have to mute ourselves and then uh right, okay. we won't we won't keep popping up and your slides can then just take over the uh take over the feed. Cool, sounds good. All right. All right, so hopefully you guys can uh, can see the um, see the slides right now. Uh, but yeah, today I'm going to be talking about um, yeah some classic, often overlooked link building methods. Um, so you know there are so many different link building methods uh, that have popped up over the years. Um, so I think it's important that people kind of remember those. And there's a great tweet that I saw last night from John Cooper that I'm going to mention as well. But firstly, a bit about me. Uh, I've been at Screen Frog for, for about seven years now. Um, so yeah, I'm very much part of the furniture. Uh, I'm currently head of content. Uh, yes, we do content. Um, it's amazing how many people uh, think that we just do the tool. Uh, we actually do loads of stuff. We do SEO, PPC. We've got in-house design and development to make all the content pieces. So yeah. We do lots of cool stuff, uh, lots of cool campaigns for clients, big and small. Um, and yeah, last at the end of the last year, we, we won Best SEO Campaign at the UK Search Awards. Uh, that's for our technical work and, and content pieces for, for one of our clients. So that's really cool. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm obsessed with links. So yeah, obviously I'm head of content, but I'm actually going to be talking about links today. Um, uh, yeah, as much as some of the some of the older link building techniques often get forgotten about, uh, people get bored of them, uh, which is crazy because yeah, they, they still work. Um, and sometimes you just got to think a, a bit more outside the box. Um, but you know, there's a lot that you you can be doing as well as content. You know, you don't have to get so obsessed with content. So I've got to make big content pieces. I've got to build links at scale. You do have to do that, but there's also lots that you can be doing on the side um, to help diversify your link profile um, and also ensure that links are, are being built during content downtime. I guess so. Perhaps you've got a content piece which is being researched, or um, you know, it's being designed. You want to build some links, keep that link profile ticking over, and keep keep the clients happy. You can kind of do some of this stuff in the background. Um, so some of these techniques are well known, uh, but some of them have a, a bit of a unique spin on things. Definitely some experimental stuff as well, which you'll see soon. Um, but hopefully uh, people pick up some some new tips from this. So yeah, here's a tweet from John Cooper that I saw last night, which is absolutely bang on, and I'm really glad that he tweeted this because it, it it validates this whole kind of these slides. But you know, who cares if a link building technique is old or outdated? If it builds links, you know, <laughs> use it. Uh, don't don't get obsessed with the new newest shiniest link building technique. Just to stick to what's tried and tested. I'm sure there will be new ones over the years, um, but you know it, it's important to kind of remember all the old school ones that uh, uh, still work really well. Okay, so first up is uh, link reclamation. So the easiest links to build are actually those that you've already built. Um, what I mean by that is. As you're building links, you know it's inevitable that some of the links that you have built will drop off; they'll disappear. This happens for for various reasons. Pages get removed, they get redirected, websites get redesigned, and it's really annoying because obviously links are really hard to build. So when uh, when one you built a, a year or two ago drops off, it can be quite annoying. Um, but you can actually uh, obviously keep an eye on these using kind of Screaming Frog. And as I said, I've been experimenting with st some stuff. I've been looking at Microsoft Flow to kind of fully automate this entire process. So I'm going to talk a bit about that now. Um, so traditionally, uh, checking links for Screaming Frog was very easy. Obviously, you need a list of all the URLs, all the links you've built, uh, which is hopefully you do have. You know, you shouldn't be relying on backlink tools to keep track of all the links that you built. Obviously, keep them in a spreadsheet somewhere. You'll be able to find all the URLs that the, that the tools won't be able to find. Um, and then it's very much just a case of uh, using ScreenForce list mode to kind of pull those links uh, with with a filter on for you know does not contain your domain. Um, and then it will just crawl through all those and it will tell you the URLs where where you've lost the link basically. Um, so that's that's a very you know the traditional way of doing it. You can do it on the fly as and when. Um, but actually, it's it's possible to kind of automate this process somewhat. Uh, with version 10 of the spider, we introduced scheduling and headless mode uh, am amongst loads of other stuff. Um, and that kind of allows you to set up that, that aforementioned call to run automatically. You won't even know it's happening. 
and it will just kind of do that export for you. And then you can then use Microsoft Flow to kind of grab that list of URLs and send you an email containing all those URLs. Um, so you can kind of schedule that to run, you know, weekly or something or monthly if you want. So you don't have to keep crawling your links that you build to check which ones are still live. You can actually, you can technically kind of fully automate the process. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Don't worry about all the details because I'm actually going to put together a blog post to kind of guide about this. I've only recently discovered it this week. I've been playing with some stuff. Um, it's a bit janky, but works really well. But um, yeah, I'll put together a full post in the, in the next week or so outlining kind of this, this method. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is ensure, obviously, yeah, you've got all your URLs in a text.txt uh, file, uh, just one per line. Um, and then you're going to want to go and set up that other crawl I mentioned, so the traditional way of doing it with your with your filter on for, for your domain. Um, and then you need to save that configuration file. Uh, so basically, it will just save you know the filter you've set up for your client's domain, you know, it does not contain, et cetera. Then you need to go to the, the scheduling part of the tool um, and create a new one and choose your kind of date, time, and frequency, how often you want it to run, you know, weekly sounds good. Um, or, or monthly, and it will just kind of just uh, it will do that in the background without without you even realizing. Um, then you need to obviously load in uh, your list of links and the config file. Um, and as mentioned, yeah, just make sure your links are in a .txt file, otherwise it won't work. Uh, for the export side of things, we're going to want it to run headless, so it's just going to run in the background uh, at the date that you choose and time. It will just it, it will just flash up for like a split second maybe, but this kind of task is not resource heavy. It's going to be it's very light work, you know, it's just calling list of URLs. You're not even going to notice it's, it's happening. It's going to slow down your PC or anything. Um, and one of the most important things here is kind of the output side of things, so where you're actually output, uh, outputting that file, exporting the file. So if you want to try and automate things with Microsoft Flow, you need to save it to a location that is uh, actually supported by, by Microsoft Flow. Uh, so I had a quick look, and it looks like they support kind of Dropbox, uh, Dropbox SharePoint, OneDrive, and Google Drive. I'm using OneDrive for this example, um, which works really well. And also, I think you get you can get a free OneDrive account, which has like five gigabytes of storage or something for free, which is more than enough. Uh, these files are not going to be big unless you've got an obscene amount of links. Um, and if you do, you should probably be doing this talk instead of me because uh, you know if five gigs a large large file size. Um, so for the export tab section, you're going to want to export just the, the filter tab that you've set up with your does not contain filter. So it's most likely going to be filter one. And then it will just kind of uh, automatically export that and make sure you also change the, the format to .xlsx as well. Uh, so once you've done that, it, it's just going to go in and crawl those links in the background and export the uh, URLs uh, where you've lost links. Um, and then we can kind of, that's when we can do some cool automation stuff for Microsoft Flow. So I'm, I'm very new to Microsoft Flow. There might be some people that know much better than me, um, but I had a little play with stuff, and this is the kind of thing that I managed to set up. Um, it's basically what it's doing. It's running at a set time every day. So one thing you're going to want to do is make sure it's running um, after, after at a time after you've done your kind of your crawl of the links, um, and then it's going to grab that file and uh, turn it into a table. Uh, it needs to be in a table within the spreadsheet. To enable you to kind of export certain parts of the table, etc., um, and it's basically going to grab just the URL column and email you um, the output. So just the URLs where you've lost links. Uh, again, you can you can run it whenever you want, uh, and it looks a bit like this. So it's a bit janky, but it works really well. I just get an email through at a predetermined time, and it includes the list of URLs where one of our backlinks has gone or something like that. So in this example, it's sent through a couple of links. Uh, where, where a client lost a backlink from those pages. And it's very basic, you know, it's just a straightforward email, but you can actually just, those links are hyperlinked, you just click on them and see what's going on. Um, and then you can kind of get back in touch with people and be like, hey, what's up, what, where's my link gone? Uh, a lot of the time you can get the link reinstated quite easily, it's, it's just like an error or something like that. Uh, or perhaps, um, yeah, they've gone for a redesign, but then you can kind of look for an alternative page to get a link from, they, they usually have those. Um, and if you've kind of uh, exchanged a bit of money for these links as well, um, then you're probably going to want to chase them up as well and see what's going on there. So yeah, that's uh, that's how to kind of automate that kind of mundane process really. So it just runs on auto by the background and notifies you when you uh, yeah when you've dropped some links. Um, so yeah, I'm going to write a blog post about that, going into more detail about it. 
So don't worry about going through these slides or anything like that. I'm gonna I'll put something together that's really easy to follow and it's very simple, but it does do well. Um, Microsoft Flow, yeah, it's got massive potential. You could do loads of stuff with it. I, I need to have a proper play of it, but you could perhaps also do this for like 400 areas on your site. So you could schedule the tool to run headlessly in the background, uh, crawl your site and export the 400 errors. Um, and then kind of get notified whenever there's some fresh 404s on your website or something like that. So yeah, you can do loads of cool stuff with that. I recommend uh, having a play of it. I'm sure someone can, can make the process much better than I have. Okay, so moving on to, to an absolute classic is broken link building. You know, we all know this one It's tried and tested, it works. I use check my links Chrome extension to, to check these on the fly um, and then uh, just get in touch with people and suggest, you know, point out that, that the link's broken on the page. Make sure that you can suggest your one, which is obviously going to be much better than, than the stuff that's already on there anyway. So it's a bit of a no-brainer, that one. Um, so, yeah, the Chrome extension, check my links, really good for that. Very straightforward. Um, but alternatively, you can use, again, the Screaming Frog uh, list mode to check a list of pages in bulk um, and then kind of export all those, and you get a big list of, of pages that are 404 ing with their kind of source page as well. You can use that to build a big outreach list, get in touch with people and stuff like that. Um, if you want using list mode to kind of check these, though, you want to make sure you change your crawl depth uh, to one, because by default, uh, list mode won't, it'll just crawl that page and it won't crawl the links on it. You won't actually find anything, so that's worth remembering. Um, and again, you can potentially automate this process with Screaming Frog um, and Microsoft Flow. You know, perhaps there's a, a page that you're really keen to get a link from or you've not had any success for, for getting a link from it. You could kind of automate a check of it and get notified by email with Microsoft Flow whenever there's a new 404 and then you can get in touch with them and, and try to try it that way. So yeah, Microsoft Flow has, like I say, got a lot of potential. Uh, resource and link pages. All right, so this is one of my one of my favorite ones to be fair and, uh, and people really don't seem to be using it as much as they should. Uh, but it's really surprising how many like massive and you know, really high authority websites like government websites have resource pages that are kind of hidden away on their site. Um, they often look really dated and crap, uh, probably because they're really old, but they're really relevant and they still get maintained and it's really easy to get links from them with the right, right approach. Uh, so this you can use kind of, kind of search operators like Intitle and InURL to find links uh, and resources pages. If you want to just look at like government sites, you're going to obviously want to use a site query for gov.uk or .gov or whatever, um, just to look at those really high value ones first. Um, and once you found a, a page that's relevant where they're linking out to resources like yours, you can obviously get in touch with them. I tend to obviously not go in cold with a, with a link request in the first email. I usually get in touch with them and say, hey, um, or if you can help me, I'm looking to get in touch with the person responsible well for the content on this page. Uh, a lot of the time on these kind of government websites, no one actually knows who owns the page, but all you're looking for is someone that can actually add a bloody link to the page. So if you can find the person responsible for the content on the page, um, that's that's the best approach. And then when they get back to you and say, hey, you need to speak to, uh, I don't know, Dave or something, then you can kind of chat with Dave and get, get that link added. Um, and again, you can kind of use broken link building into your outreach as well. Uh, that can work well. Um, so something else you can kind of do with these. Uh, so with the government pages and stuff like that, it's quite common for them to perhaps just add your link without saying anything or, or they'll add it, you know, six months down the line, you don't even realize. So obviously you can check these pages with Screaming Frog by using the methods uh, mentioned before where you're just crawling and checking to see if, the, you know, your link's been added with, a, with using the contains filter. Again, you can probably automate that um, with Microsoft Flow as well, so it's checked per periodically. Uh, but there's something else you can use as well called visualping.io. Uh, so say there's like a really you know high value resource, resource page that you're really desperate to get a link from. Um, and you want to kind of keep an eye on it. You've outreached to them. They've not really got back to you. You don't know if they're going to add your link or not. And you just want to kind of keep an eye on it. You can use Visual Ping to kind of get notified if there's any changes on the page. So in this example, this is where I built um, a, a gov.uk link for one of my personal sites. And it's a really relevant page, but it's kind of split up into these sections. So with Visual Ping, you can kind of just uh, drag and select an area on the page, so the section that you're hoping to get a link from, um, and set up an alert, you know, to run weekly or monthly or something like that. Uh, and you'll get notified if anything on that page in that section changes. Um, obviously, this is it, it works slightly differently than just crawling it for the, containing your domain or anything, because you actually get notified if anything is added to that page. So 
you can see what links are actually being added to the page um, and see what kind of uh, content they're being receptive to and perhaps you know give you a bit of an idea of um of what you need to do with your outreach or what you need to do with your content in order to kind of get that really really high value link so yeah visualping.io is a really cool one uh, i think i saw tom blackshear mention it originally so yeah shout out for, for bringing that to my attention it looks like a really cool tool and and the free side of things looks really generous as well i think you get quite a, quite a few free monitoring uh, monitor monitor stuff um career guides so this is something else we've done with some some success before as well so most universities have really comprehensive career sections on their site and they'll kind of link out to information resources around different career paths and stuff like you know what, what you need to do to pursue a career in pharmaceuticals or something like that so you can actually obviously find these pages with a site query so in this example it's just a site.ac.uk to find kind of UK universities uh, for pages around pharmaceutical career resources. And then you can kind of have a look at the content on that page and put together like a really in-depth career guide based on your, your client's industry, basically. So in this example, we had a client that sold wallpaper online um, and we put together a really big guide on how to get a career in design so interior design textile design graphic design stuff like that we we added stuff like you know what do the day-to-day -day tasks look like what's the career progression the average salary and stuff like that um and we made it look nice we added some design stuff and then we kind of outreach to pages that are relevant so like arts and crafts and like you know interior design career resource pages on universities and we built around yeah seven seven university links with an average da of 82 um so it was it it only took like a couple of days, if that, to put together the guide. Um, so it can work really well. You know, it depends what kind of industry your client's in, but usually they have sections around every single sector there is. Um, but a bit of a tip is to do a check um, of kind of the university pages to make sure they have sections around your client's industry before you put all the resources into making a guide, because Otherwise, you might have a guide about how to career, uh, pursue a career in, in, I don't know, lawn maintenance or something, and you'll be like, oh, shit, no one actually has a page on that. So don't do that. Make sure there's link opportunities to outreach to before you actually put together the guide. Okay, so this is along a similar vein, really. Um, as well as, yeah, the career, the career guide stuff, universities also have pages dedicated to job sources, so where to find jobs. Um, Again, they're really easy to find with a site query, just typing stuff in like career resources, finding a job, you know, sales job sources and stuff like that. Um, and a lot of them will, will outreach to um, to websites if they have a graduate scheme or if they recruit graduates. So, you know, we had a couple of clients that have like really good graduate schemes. One of them's like really award winning. Uh, and it's really easy to outreach to these pages. Again, they're really high value, really easy to get a link from. Um, it doesn't take any time at all. You, you can literally just point them to it, to, careers page and say, yeah, we, we hire graduates, uh, add, us to the, add us to the vacancy source page. Uh, so that's a, that's a really easy one. All right, really quick and dirty one here. If your client sells products, um, you know, lots of products, big e-commerce site, look for um, where to buy and stockers pages on the sites of the brands that they stock, basically. So, you know, as mentioned, I had a wallpaper client and they stocked every brand of wallpaper you can imagine. Um, and we basically looked at all the kind of brand pages, uh, or pages on the on the brands. And a lot of them have, you know, where to buy pages or stockers pages. You've just got to email them and say, oh, yeah, you know, we, we sell your product, add this to the where to buy page. Job done. Uh, it's really simple, that one. Uh, local meetups and courses. OK, so, yeah, this one's a cool one. If if there are any kind of local meetups around around the area or that are relevant to your client's industry, sometimes you can kind of sponsor them. So in this example, this is like a tech uh, meetup um, in Reading. And you can see at the bottom here, they've got like this thank you to our sponsors section. Those are actually, they're, they're hyperlink, they're followed links. You know, meetup.com is pretty high value. It might pass a bit of value, obviously. It's not gonna pass a lot of value as, as it's got so many pages on, but it'll pass a bit of value, but also you, getting you know your client in front of loads of people who uh, are super relevant to them so that one's a really easy one it might be you know sponsoring the, the bar for for an event or something like that uh you have to chat with them and see see what you can do but um there's loads of stuff like this uh, it's, it's cool to get involved with and obviously you can kind of get some value from it in the process as well uh so yeah this is a, looking more at kind of local groups and causes around your client as well so this is a 
uh, example of a page which, yeah, it looks really bad, but it's, it was actually decent. Um, so we had a client who uh, had luxury holiday cottages in Cornwall. Um, so I started looking around, you know, various local cores and stuff, and I stumbled upon um, this uh, website, which is Cornwall Moth Group. Uh, from what I could tell, it was literally just a group of people who, you know, looked at moths and stuff in Cornwall. Um, and they had this page on, you know, where to stay in Cornwall uh, if you want to go to Cornwall and look at moths. Um, and we got in touch with them and cut long story short, you know, we offered a, a you know, donation or whatever. I think it was like £25 a year to get included on the page. This isn't actually our client. I just grabbed a screenshot of it. But, um, you know, lots of little causes like this. And I think this was like DA, you know, 30, 40 odds um, on a page about, you know, accommodation in Cornwall. It's pretty relevant to the client and it was it was super cheap as well. So, yeah. Always look for kind of like little local groups. There's so many little local groups around about anything uh, that you can kind of get linked from. Uh, Harrow, yeah, so everyone's heard of Harrow, but I swear most people don't actually use it. Um, obviously, it stands for Help a Reporter Out, and you basically just get an email um, through and, you know, a few times a day from journals that are looking for someone to comment on something. Sometimes it can be really easy. So not long ago, I contributed to a gift article, gift, gift idea article. And I got like a DA37 link, and it literally took less than two minutes of work. I think they're wanting products on Amazon that were good for, you know, kids or something like that. Um, and I went on Amazon and, and picked one and said, this looks really good. It's got good reviews. And they just included it and added a link to, to the site. Um, and it honestly it took less than two minutes. So keep an eye on these. They come in every day. It's easy to just follow them because you can't be able to look at them. But actually, you need to kind of go through and, and pick out the ones that are relevant to your client. And make sure that you, you're responding as quickly as possible as well because they're going to get swamped with stuff if it's a good one. Uh, so one thing you can do is put together a kind of templated copy about your company and stuff because they often need that or about the spokesperson who's going to make a comment, so, which is often your client and stuff like that. So uh, have that stuff ready and then you can kind of fire off the email really quickly. Uh, as well as this, uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of people already know about this stuff as well, is hashtag, you know, PR request and journal request. Again, it's a lot of crap on there, but sometimes you, you, you'll find a really good opportunity for client. And sometimes it's just a comment about something that takes two minutes and they get included in an article on a really nice site uh, with a link, obviously. Um, but you kind of, you can, you need a bit of patience with that one because it is, it gets spammed by so much crap. It's hard to kind of filter through, but um, you can kind of just keep an eye on it and, and see what, see what comes up. That can work well too. Give raise and reviews. This is, yeah, this is a no brainer. Everyone knows about this one, but again, you know, I think it could, people can use it more. If your client has good products, unique products, then you can kind of give them away to people to review or, or give away or something like that. Um, you need to keep it natural. You need to make sh let the let the you know the person looking at the article do their thing. Don't tell them to link to pages. Don't tell them to use anchor text. Just send them the product. Let them write something naturally and see what happens. Um, obviously, you need to make sure that your product's good because if they just rip into it, it's gonna it's gonna end badly for you. But um, well, if they add a link, maybe maybe it doesn't matter so much. But um, you know, just let them do their thing with it. Um, so in this example, uh, again, <laughs> going back to the wallpaper client who sold wallpaper online, got in touch with this um, mum blog, which was pretty nice, pretty nice value actually. I said, hey, would you be interested in looking up some wallpaper? I wasn't very hopeful to be honest, but she was like, hey, you know what? I'm actually redirecting, redirect, redecorating one of our bedrooms. You know, I'd love to grab some wallpaper to use. And straight away, I was like, oh, really? That's really interesting because I also have a, a, a client that does made to measure blinds. And she's like, oh, that's great. So, cut long story short, she put together a post on her nicely new de redecorated room, got a link to two clients in it by sending some wallpaper and some blinds. It's very simple. You know, you don't want to do that one at any any scale, really, just that every now and then, um, because one, the client might not want to give away loads of product, and two, you don't want to, yeah, you don't want to pursue it too heavily because you might get a little slap on the wrist or something like that, but as long as you're keeping it natural, it's fine. Um, that one can work pretty well as well. So yeah, that that was my slides. I, I, was, I was shooting for half an hour. I think I'm a little bit under that. So um, I'm also really happy to answer any questions about link building that people have, um, or content as well. Obviously, content's my, my kind of bread and butter, but I like to keep keep the link building side of things going too. Um, yeah, but if anyone wants to ask me anything, shoot, really happy to talk about it. Uh, I have a question for you. Okay. So we like to do some broken link building, but so I had an issue with the with the with the spider. Um, you know, like set my crawl depth to one, 
And when I put in my list of like 2,400 um, links pages or resources pages um, that I want to look for broken links on, what ends up happening is the spider ends up crawling forever. And all of a sudden, I'll let it run for a couple hours on like 40 threads. And I'll be at like 200,000 out of 8 million things to crawl. Right. Okay. And it just goes on forever. Is there something that I've done wrong, or is it a problem with uploading a couple thousand uh, lines in a list at once? Or yeah. So how many um, how many links were you looking to check? Was it uh, like twenty four hundred or something? Yeah. So you guess like if you guess the average links page is like twenty five on. So you're expecting like fifty thousand or something, or uh, you know two hundred thousand maximum, not eight million, end up being crawled with level one. Yeah, um, so that happy to look at any specific examples. That's probably something that's happening. Uh, I had it the other day actually. I, I can't remember how I how I managed to do it, but I had the option enabled, which was like um, to crawl the sitemaps or the pages as well. So it was oh. like crawling um, all the pages, and I obviously I just wanted to check links, and also it was like getting their sitemaps and crawling all those as well. Um, so. Uh sometimes stuff like that can happen or occasionally you know there's something else on there that throws it off and sends it down a bit of a bit of a rabbit hole um but yeah happy to kind of look at any of that stuff if you spot anything um sometimes it's yeah it just needs a bit of a tweaking on the settings yeah i might uh looking at it now i might have left that on so it, yeah there we yeah go. i think i think it's good it's good to know a uh, screaming frog pro can also leave that turned on when it's like <laughs> yeah we've just we've just we've just gone back to using screaming frog and I was like, I said to Gara, oh yeah, it's super simple. You just slap these in, click level one, and off you go. Because that's what I remembered from last time I'd used yeah. it, but years ago. And Gara's like, well, it's trying to scrape 8 million pages. I'm like, <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, that I might sound to... right, but. Uh... Yeah, I might check that one out actually, because I, okay. I want to make sure that um, it's not enabled by default in list mode or something like that. Uh, I'm not sure if that makes sense. But yeah, we'll check that out. I mean, yeah, like I said, I did it. It's easy to do. And yeah, it can obviously kind of keep it, keep your spider tool going for an obscene amount of time. Yeah, when I have it in list mode and I go to spider configuration, by default, um, crawl linked XML sitemaps is checked. Okay. Uh, there you go. Yeah. So it's All on right. By default now. So yeah, I guess, I'll, I'll I guess it wasn't on by default before, which is why it worked fine when I did it in the past. Or, yeah, or we didn't have that feature at the time, maybe. Oh, but, yeah, that. yeah, almost certainly. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, yeah. but I'll check that, and obviously we need to update some guides and stuff because I don't, I think we missed that bit out. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. Cool. Well, that was useful for everyone. Yeah. Any questions in the chat, guys? Uh, we're a little bit lighter on live viewers than we were hoping just because we've had some longer gaps than expected during this patch of the show so sure um quite a few people came back um which is good but um not sure if we're gonna have too many questions i mean i expect lots of people doing reports on the <laughs> on the first of the month i know that I yeah it yeah longer. it's uh <laughs> it's uh We'll get uh, we'll get a lot of people watch it on the replays. Um, Garrett gets those done um, pretty quickly, and then you guys can all get them out to your audience, show what you shared, and um, just a reminder to everyone um, who'll be watching on the replay. Obviously, the speakers have not only um, all donated, or their companies have donated, um, but they've given up their time to raise money for St. Jude's Children's Cancer Hospital. Um, obviously, as we've gone over um, quite a few times. Um, they do amazing work. They're, they're working on a, a genome project to help um, identify pretty futuristic cures. Um, obviously, that's a huge project and um, it's a long way out, but they do the kind of research that doesn't have um, quick and easy wins. It's the kind of research that drugs companies won't fund. It's research into rare forms of cancer that are horrific for the children they affect, but don't affect enough children for drugs companies to want to invest in. So it's research that can only really be uh, achieved through um, our support. And uh, obviously you guys support watching today has been hugely appreciated. It's amazing to see us uh, get over $8,000. We raised like five, eight last year or something. So 
quite a big increase from what we did last year. So yeah. thank you, everyone. And if any of you've got any uh, last minute juice, um, please do jump on. And we have, uh, we have a $10. couple of questions. Go okay. Ahead. Uh, Patrick Landridge asked, Mark, what's the dirtiest link you've ever built? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, Patrick's our head of SEO at Screen Frog. Uh, so, he probably already knows the answer to this. Um, <laughs> oh, gosh. That's a, <laughs> that's, that's a really hard question. I mean, obviously, it wasn't too long ago that link building was basically just buy as many links as you can, and it's really easy. Yeah. Um, but these days, it's, uh, it's much harder. So, obviously, bought, bought fair share of links back in the day. Um, I, no specific example comes to mind. Um, I'm sure there are some out there that I've forgotten about. Um, I mean, we've done some, uh, did some cool link bait stuff back in the day, but that wasn't really dirty. Um, you know, it was stuff like that was humorous and uh, just pointing it out to people and, and they'd cover it and stuff like that. But I don't think maybe maybe I don't have anything too bad. I, I expect Patrick can answer that question much better than me because I know that he does have some dark links in his, in his history. Um, it'd be interesting to see if he's up for revealing those, but uh, doubt he is. Um, what, what you don't know is he's, he's found um, he's found some really dodgy link that you've built, and he's yeah. trying to get you to admit to it on there. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to start sending screenshots over to you. I bet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tao Schnex was wondering. Um, Apart from building relationships, is blog commenting worth the effort still? Uh, blog commenting, yeah. I mean, I never used to do it at scale anyway, really. But I mean, it's very rarely that you'll get any link value from something like that these days. There'll probably be no follow or, you know, Google will just you know, understand that much better these days. But I mean, I think it's, you know, if you want to get involved in an industry properly, you should be commenting on, on relevant stuff anyway and just you know, getting a bit of a brand exposure or something like that. Um, but I wouldn't I wouldn't invest much time into it, only when you've actually got something to say. Don't be one of those people um, that just sends send something really generic. It's just not worth your time. You're not going to get much link value from it. Mm -hmm. uh, Jason asked, any fresh tips from the field for using Screaming Frog for internal link optimization? <laughs> Uh, good question. Potentially, yeah. I mean, so obviously, um, I mentioned Screaming Frog version 10 in, in the slides. It added loads of stuff. One of them was um, like the, all the crawl map visualization stuff that it does now, uh, which you can do loads of stuff with. That can be a really good way of spotting, um, you know, areas of your site which are perhaps not, not linked to very well um, uh, or, or uh, you know, or that are really deep in the site that you can perhaps surface a bit better. Um, so definitely look, definitely look at uh, the new stuff in version 10, all the, the cool visualization stuff. We also have metrics in the tool, so you can see right in the table view how deep pages are and stuff. Uh, you can perhaps uh, hook it up to some kind of API like GA or something like that to see um, if there are any pages that are getting, you know, not very much not very much traffic or something like that. They can give a boost to it with easy internal link or something like that. So, yeah, there's quite a few ways to do it. Um, we might have some kind of documentation on it on our site. If not, uh, I can suggest us putting something together like a blog post on that kind of thing. Because obviously, you know, I, the easiest links to build, I said, were ones that you already build, but actually it's internal links because they work really well. For sure. <clears throat> I know internal links are Garrett's favorite thing as well. So. If you do a blog post about that, I'm sure we'll use Screaming Frog even more for that now that we've got it back again. <laughs> yeah, so what have you got? Uh, what did you used to use before then? Well, we used to use Screaming Frog. And then, uh, you know, the last few years, we've just been really focusing on offering our outreach service. Right, weren't, okay, really, yeah. weren't really building any sites, weren't working on client sites. And... Um, now that we're building our own sites again, been using Screaming Frog. We, uh, I tried um, Content King, and it is a nice tool. Mm. But um, for us, like I, like I told Stephen, right now it just doesn't make sense to use it. I don't, I don't have enough time to actually work on our sites like I should. To... Sure. So Screaming Frog fills that void. Perfectly. Actually, yeah. Yeah, I actually got a message from my boss. So the thing we're talking about, the list mode thing and the sitemaps, apparently that's a bug. It shouldn't be enabled by default. 
um, yeah. and it's, it's fixed in the next version, I believe. So, yeah, that sorts your sorts there your problem out. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I mean, another cool thing you can use uh, Screaming Frog for a bit of uh, bonus content for any of you watching is if you've uh, if you're um, doing some uh, like you're looking to get some sites to reach out to, um, you can take links pages and run them all through Screaming Frog, and that'll give you more sites on the topic that you might not have easily picked up. Um, so it's a nice. Uh, Way of, uh, I know people used to use uh, Scrapebox for all that kind of stuff, yeah. like crawling people's blog rolls and find extra sites and site discovery that way. Um, Screaming Frog is kind of a, a good jack of all trades tool if you just want to pick up a little bit of extra data and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. There's loads of stuff you can do with it these days. Uh, the guys have been working really hard, adding lots of cool features. Scraping side of things are really good as well. Yeah, um, you know, I use I've used the scraping aspect of it to uh, get loads of data to for research for a content piece, for example. So I think one of the things that um, I wanted was like uh, review scores from a website for hotels and stuff like that. Literally just scraped scraped seventy odd pages. Um, in no time with screen frog so you can actually use it for researching content pieces and stuff so uh yeah it does quite a lot like you said these days yeah yeah it's been nice to see it again um i mean we were writing um scrapey scripts in python for a lot of scraping and stuff um and screaming frog kind of for some other things you can just do without any without too much messing around so i think we'll We'll end up uh, getting it for a, for a few more um, of our team, um, and then we've got a couple of licenses. Garrett's using it, and one other, but I can see us uh, ending up with a few if we find more uses and stuff. Definitely. Anything that saves you writing code um, saves time, doesn't it? So. Yeah. So you, yeah, you can use obviously regex, but I'm I'm pretty terrible at regex. So I usually just kind of try and get by with copying kind of like the the X path or something like that in Chrome. Mm. Um, but yeah, if you know regex as well, you can do some some crazy stuff with it. I shall have a play. Sounds fun. <laughs> not this uh, not this morning though. Um, no. Get yeah. Through the last, get through the get through the last presentation after yourself and. Uh, Sleep. I made the mistake of trying to eat in between the presentations, and now my stomach's not feeling good. I think it wanted to go to sleep. <laughs> and I think so. <laughs> it's been, uh... <sighs> uh, Tao says uh, I've been using Sightbulb and Screaming Frog, the free version, and Screaming Frog just seems more accessible to me. Sightbulb seems to hide away the data too much. It is hard to find issues. It says it has detected. Yeah, I think one of the, yeah, I mean, they both, obviously, all these tools have their kind of pros and cons, really. I mean, if you're really serious about SEO, you should have subscriptions to um, to a few of them. Uh, but Screaming Frog, obviously, you just kind of get, get the data straight away. It gets, gets thrown in your face. Um, and, yeah, personally, I like being able to just dig into the data really easily, uh, as opposed to kind of, like, report reports and stuff like that. So, yeah, they all have the, the, the pros and cons. Depends on what you're kind of looking, looking to do with them. <clears throat> yeah, when we used to do consulting, Screaming Frog was our kind of first go-to before we did anything. Get their site in there and uh, let her rip and see what see what she found. Um, I think it's a good starting point, and I think for a lot of people um, who've watched this, you know, the smaller agencies and stuff, where you don't want to be buying all these, you know enterprise cloud type licenses and stuff screaming frogs really accessible um to get for a couple of members of your team and let them get stuck in so mm. I think yeah it's, uh, it's uh it's still pretty cheap to be fair i mean the, the price has increased a bit over the years but that's because the functionality has been you know it, it's exploded the amount of stuff you can do with it now so it's still yeah it's still it's still crazy cheap so yeah it's like i said it's, it's good to have a subscription to a few a few different tools then you're covering yeah. all bases really Well, what do we do for the next three hours? <laughs> um, well, I, I don't know. We, we've got no uh, content or speakers, unfortunately. So I might go for a walk to avoid falling asleep. And uh... there's a little crisis you need to take care of. 
I was well, I'll wait, I'll catch the message offline. So I shall I, 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 will, uh, leave you guys to with, I will I will deal with the crisis then and then go for a walk. <laughs> uh yeah, whatever, Mark. Um if you want to stay, you can. Otherwise, if you want to get going, no big deal. Appreciate you joining us. Nah, no yeah, worries. thanks for coming on, man. It's been uh, been really good. I think some people got some good value out of that this morning. And, uh, yeah, hopefully. Um, yeah. And yeah, obviously, keep up, guys. Doing doing a good job. Yeah. Uh, the, the finish line is in sight, I guess. <laughs> yeah, one, 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 more, uh, one more presentation. Uh, and then we can look forward to getting all the replays out. Um, I think there's been some great presentations this year. I think people will really enjoy all the... Uh, all the replays if they miss people live and so on. Yeah, and obviously they should be donating if they want to watch those, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, get your get your donations in. Um, if you're watching this on replay and you haven't donated yet, please uh, please just throw five bucks in. Um, you know, it all adds up um, pretty yeah, quickly if you can Chris see. Chris Tyson came back and donated another two fifty, and Jason threw in another one twenty during the presentation. Uh, so fantastic! Thank you, thank you so much. Awesome. All right, guys, I'm going to wish you luck, and uh, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll be tuned in throughout the day, and uh, yeah, good luck with the rest of it. Okay, thanks, man. Yeah, thank right. you. Thanks, guys. Bye. See you later, Mark. Bye-bye. Well, does anyone want to come on, or should we just take another break? Just just take another break, put the uh, notice up at the time of the last speaker, and then we'll, we'll get that recorded, and they come on. Okay. Uh... 7 a.m. here is 1 p.m. your time. Six hours, isn't it? So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to fall asleep. Hey, Steve. Hey, Patrick. How's Sorry about the uh, technical difficulties there. I don't know why uh, <laughs> it wouldn't let me send that to you on, on YouTube. And uh, apologies that uh, Vin wasn't uh, here to welcome you. He was the only one that had your email and contacts and everything. So I was hoping you would turn up in the chat so I could just get you on. Yeah, awesome. Um, so I guess we're the uh, last man standing for the uh, 24 hours. So thank you for thank you for agreeing to come on. Um, super cool. And uh, last chance for any of you still watching to make those uh, make those final donations. Um, we've got a really good total for the 24 hours. Um, thank you to everyone that supported already. It's a wonderful cause. St Jude's Children's Cancer Research Hospital that all the speakers have given their time up for. So. Um, if you enjoy the presentation, and if, uh, even if you're watching this on replay over the next few weeks, please uh, jump on the link in the notes. And uh, even if you can just give five bucks, it's all appreciated. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, absolutely, everyone, please give 
Uh, I don't actually have a presentation. I talked with Vin about that, um, but oh, I just kind of—I uh, was—I was, I wasn't warned about this. <laughs> is that why they've all—is that why they've all gone? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> no, I—I I think it all kind of cover some stuff uh, in real time. Like, I don't even know if they changed the topic. Uh, it seemed like what I was going to talk about was covered a lot already. There was some keyword research, and I know Jeff from Mark and Muse was on. Uh, so I kind of want to talk about just how to prioritize SEO tasks. Um, cause in general, I think, uh, a lot of the tools lead people to waste time. I'm going to say, uh, so I'm a, I'm a technical SEO at IBM and, uh, people won't believe this, but we have to move pretty fast over here, <laughs> uh, and can't waste time. Uh, if we, you know, if we're asking for little things, um, you know, hey, you got multiple H1s on your page. Well, one, that's not really an issue. But if we go and ask for that and there's no impact, then we mm -hmm. just wasted a lot of time, a lot of probably had a lot of meetings and then no outcome, I'm going to say. Uh, so like the it, it's interesting because to me, the tools, I don't know if it's just that people have made that their process, like run this through this tool and then do the things it says, or they haven't really thought about how to do it better and what's going to have an impact. Uh, so, I mean, we were joking about that a little bit with the uh, chat mark from Screaming Frog. Like you, you, you have a kind of habit of, you know, you got a new client, you run it through Screaming Frog, you do the, and that's where you start obviously if um, you're right but if that's where you also stop you're kind of um you know just tweaking h1 tags and messing around with alt text you know like i mean i've seen someone go through and fix all their alt text to improve their click-through rate on like some insane number of pages it's like well half of these don't <laughs> even rank anywhere so yeah like okay but that's kind of not the first thing i would have done just because Screaming Frog gave you a load of, of that data, so it's kind of interesting. Yeah, your title tag's too long, your title tag's too short, you're missing all text. Well, maybe that image shouldn't have all text. There's there's no logic built into them. There's nothing that says, hey, what should this page be ranking for? Are we actually targeting that? Mm -hmm. Uh, and even the, to the tools that kind of do more of the on-page targeting, like they're basically the checks are all did i use this thing in these places but not you know can that be a variation of that that means the same thing or can mm -hmm. that be multiple things um or even like am i targeting something that even makes sense at all yeah uh, <clears throat> excuse me sorry i'm losing my voice now <laughs> no worries. Have you been doing this for the, I guess, almost 24 hours now? Yeah, we had a few uh, a few slots um, either went astray or weren't filled. So we've had a bit of a layoff now. I um, I dozed off for 15 minutes of the break on the sofa, which is the, the worst timing. I dozed off right before it was time to come back on. So, uh, yeah, didn't really take much advantage of the break this year. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I was on, we were on for, I guess, nearly 20 hours solid then there was a bit of a break so um, wow last year we had um we only had one gap and some people were um, a couple of agencies happened to be floating around wanted to throw some staff on so we managed to keep it going for the whole 24 hours with uh, people on throughout so um ironically we've done less less good a job of organizing year two but we've thank goodness raised more money for the charity so I say we uh, all of all of you guys coming on to speak have raised a fair amount of money for the charity because um, I'm sure they're not donating to listen to me sounding tired and <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah no, that's great and uh, BBS usual has managed to be around for pretty much the entire thing so <laughs> she's like the uh, unofficial chat room moderator I think. <laughs> yeah, I was glad she was able to put me in or get up with one of you. 
So I was like sending emails and Skype and I'm like, I don't know what to do at this point. Well, I was uh, I was coming anyway, but I, I kind of signed in and saw like, oh, she's phoning Garrett and Garrett's not here. I was thinking, oh no, <laughs> I guess it's just me then. <laughs> yeah. Um, but not to worry. <laughs> Yeah, um, so I guess going back, like easy wins to me, the way the way that I pitch kind of the whole process here is like we got to do things that matter uh, that are going to actually have an impact that are actually going to move the needle. So like if, if it's a title tag, unless we completely miss the mark, um, but that's kind of like a page by page thing. No tool that I know of at scale will say this is these are the things that these pages should rank for. And like this is the kind of stuff that should be talked about on them. Uh, it's hard to find even one that does that uh, or the tools that are out there that are that, that there are a lot of content tools now, but they all kind of have the same thing. They end up going here you know but the outcome is basically mention this word 13 times mention this other word 11 times and i mean <laughs> to me that's not really much better than keyword density and i think it's because they're actually basing it on tfidf which is term frequency inverse document frequency but it's 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 interesting because they're basically like use the word a certain number of times without understanding like what the content actually says like what is the meaningful content that needs to be there yeah from what i understand most of the top tools that use that kind of analyze the top 10 results don't they and then they just tell you well the top 10 results tend to have the word you know gold tip crossbow or something and the phrase gold tip crossbow seven times and steel tip nine times and i mean jared kind of pointed out some of the folly of following that too much. And I think um, someone else earlier on um, was kind of like, well, if, if all of the 10 top 10 results suck, you're kind of just copying 10 that suck when you should be thinking originally and maybe beating all of them. Yeah, or I, I was on partially for uh, some of the stuff yesterday and Jeff Coyle talked about like the fractured intent. So when I search, you know, <laughs> it, when a search has like, here's some stuff for what is this thing? Here's some product listings. Here's like product comparisons. Here's this thing versus this other thing. And the intent is basically like what people are searching for, which is all that stuff. Like those are generally the top search things. So Google's trying to show like a mix of those top answers, basically the top things people search for because they're not quite sure uh, what, what it is. So it's, it's kind of like they need to, if, if they try and compare versus like that whole, like all 10 of those, well, a lot of those are very different from each other. Uh, so they need to probably in that case, either do all that stuff uh, or do one of those things better than the other sites. But yeah, we, and that takes kind of um, having a look and making a judgment, not just having a writer go through with the tool and write the pages the tool says for them to write. Because like you say, in some cases, when there's that split intent, you could get some pretty uh, schizophrenic results back, I guess, in terms of what you're supposed to combine to make the new page. Yeah, yeah, and uh, trying to like measure yourself against any particular page is gonna be really difficult in that in that situation because you just don't, you don't know how that's going to turn out. We've, we've actually done some things to try and measure the content around that. And those, those are the ones that drive us the baddiest because like we expect, Hey, the, you know, based on what we're talking about, like the top answers, uh, what we know about the topic and everything, the top answers should be basically in order, like by the weighting, the probability that, that they turn out and it'll just turn out like, in, you know, a number six result is 0.8 match to the topic, but a number one result is like a 0.2 match, like 20% match. And it's it's really interesting to see stuff like that because you're like, well, is that really the best answer for the topic? Why is Google kind of showing that one there instead? And it might be, again, that they're like meeting one main thing out of that fractured intent. 
Got a, got a question from the uh, chat. Work Music wants to know if you're an expert in PBNs. I don't know if that's something from your your yeah. past. Or no, <laughs> no he's I not. I can <laughs> probably answer questions, but my answers will probably be don't use them or they might help you a little in very uncompetitive niches, I would say. Yeah, I think um, if you missed it earlier, um, Work Music, if you sign up on 24 hours of SEO.com, um, there'll be replays coming up, and Joe Sinkwitz talked uh, a little bit about PBMs. Uh, well, I, not in the traditional sense. He talked all about PBMs, just not in the traditional sense, but that might be pretty interesting for you. So um, sign up, and you'll get all the replays and slides from um, people that had slides, including, including Joe. Yeah, I, I do a lot of affiliate stuff, but I honestly have not used PBNs in years at this point. It just, it hasn't worked out to be called. Like the, if you're at all creative or want to put in at all any work, you will get better results. I, I don't know, Joe seems to be having some fun. But I, I agree with you from uh, starting from a position of limited knowledge, trying to build up the uh, skills to pull off a PBN is seems like uh, harder work to me than just just getting on with normal things. Um, but obviously, with um, significantly more experience to Joe, it's probably easier than doing something else. So, um, yeah, check out Joe's. I don't think we'll be talking much about it on this segment. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm more uh, enterprise, um, and it's kind of a different world, <laughs> I would say. Uh, we so don't I mean, need off, to... off the record, what's uh, IBM's PBM like? <laughs> <laughs> it, I'm, I'm, people always ask me, like, what's the big difference between, like, agency and enterprise? And I, I joke that I, it's semi a joke, I guess. Um, we don't really have to build links because we do stuff. We actually get links. But hey, if we really want to go rank for something, we can go throw a few billion dollars and buy a company. Like it's, <laughs> it really is kind of a, a different world in that sense. Yeah, it's like with um, Reuters have their big kind of data and aggregation division, and they just go around. Thomson Reuters, they just go around buying things to, oh, we want to be in this space, who, who do we buy kind of thing. And it's, uh, you see some of the properties they've purchased to rank in sectors. And um, whereas, you know, like you say, if you were working for a normal company, you can't just make a few hundred million dollar acquisition to pick up some SERPs. Yeah, I think we actually have a like Wikipedia page that shows all of our acquisitions and it's pretty much like one a month for the last 20 some years, 30 years. Um, yeah, like I'm not surprised. Ma major acquisition. I'm not surprised, um, especially in the tech industry because um, there's so many uh, acquisitions just for talent and for patents and um, knowledge and technology and, and obviously sometimes for rankings, but I'd imagine rankings is the least common acquisition reason. Yeah, typically it's more like product fit. Um, but what makes it interesting, at least for me, is that, hey, those sites uh, and, you know, companies don't typically have just one. They might, they might, I, rarely will they have just one. They might have dozens, hundreds, even thousands of sites on their own. So like consolidating that stuff, getting redirects right, fixing redirects, getting everything internally linked, uh, rebranding, all that stuff kind of comes into play. Um, which actually, that's, that's interesting. Let me see if I can share my screen a second. Uh, it's been a while since I've used Hangouts. So like going back to kind of the tooling and what's there, uh, something that's interesting, this is probably the most useful thing for me is go to a domain, go to Best Buy links, uh, and then just filter and see what's broken. 
one, you get you have kind of an ordered list. So if I'm like moving a whole site, this is really easy. I can just say, hey, these are my top priority ones. Uh, but I can also look and say, wait, what? No pages. They have no 404s, four eh? Four, I don't believe that. Might be because I have www. No company has no 404s. There we go. There we go. <laughs> so, like, for right off the bat, we got like 12,000. A lot of these look like community things, but like, this looks like an old tool, a blog category, citations page. I would, is that really broken? Or is, it is. Okay. Wow. Uh, so, sometimes, like, you can't necessarily trust that that's actually a 404. So we typically like crawl through these and check. But in that case, it actually is. And that's 166 referring domains from things like entrepreneur.com, search engine watch, business.com, bright local. These look industry relevant, reach local, SEO chat, search engine people, AWR. Yeah, um, that's a lot of good links lost that they could fix with one redirect. Getting sloppy at the Mars. I can't, uh, I can't say I can't say it surprises me with that company, but you know, I can. We'll, we'll, we'll leave that. Pretty much throw any there. company in there, and it's gonna be this way. Uh, <laughs> big surprise, bigger site, bigger disasters, which is one of the reasons I love doing tech SEO at an enterprise level. Uh, it's just because there's there's a lot of like fun stuff. There's a lot of cruff to clean up. But the, this is a super easy win for anyone. You know, uh, even local businesses typically will change probably their platform, their their hosting, and have a new web design every two. I'm going to say two to five years, which means at this point they've been around a while. They they have multiple old versions that now have broken links. Uh, pretty easy win to go clean these up. Uh, it's I'm kind sure of funny my... a, uh, a tool provider who makes a tool that finds these things has these things <laughs> with so many referring domains broken. Yeah, and these look like, I mean, a lot of these are related. I, I know they still have Moz Local. I would think citation content is important to them. Yeah, I think in one of their recent releases, Moz Local's uh, one of the more successful parts of the business. Yeah, I used to use it when I was at an agency. It was, it was pretty solid. It was a lot cheaper back then, too, I think. Yeah, I, I liked it before they bought it when it was just uh, just free in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, not that we do that kind of work anymore anyway, but... Um... Yeah, uh... So there's always a lot of opportunities here, even with stuff that's redirected. Um, it may not be redirected properly. Like uh, at least for us, we tend to, and this is this is going to be the case with any acquisition at any company. I shouldn't say just us. Um, we'll take a whole site that maybe has tens of thousands of pages and kind of redirect it to one page because we built that one page on our side and we're like, that's ours now, we can do that. Mm. Uh, so that happens a lot. So getting uh, the historical data, what, what content they had, what was ranking, restoring a lot of that, getting the redirects to the proper locations. It's a lot of my job basically. Uh, but then it's, it's still after that, like people think, hey, we're a big brand, we have a huge advantage. If we don't get our content right, we still don't rank. Happens all the time. We rank for our brand pretty well. If you ever actually look at a, most big sites, they don't do well in their unbranded organic content. Uh, they'll rank for a lot of branded terms and they'll throw up big numbers in all the tools and people are like, wow, I can never beat them. But if you dig into it, most of the time they're not necessarily writing, say, informational content or product comparisons might not even be legal on their website. Someone can do that. Mm. Or like this thing versus this other thing. A lot, a lot of that stuff is, I'm going to say, a huge gap at most large companies. I suppose large companies are probably more risk averse to like, you know, startups are always slating each other with fake comparison things to get in, like, you know, 
Um, you might, I, I think Moz actually has one, correct me if I'm wrong. I, they've like, you know, Moz versus Ahrefs and, uh, you know, these kind of, I, I'm sure one of the, one of them has something like that. Um, oh, I think the, the link one. studies. Uh, one, one, I think one of them did one about each other. Um, a lot, yeah, it's not coming up here, so. Yeah. No. I think I know what you're talking about. Like, but uh, yeah, one of the one of the, one of the stats is that I guess it would be um, more difficult for IBM to kind of be like uh, IBM versus whoever in one space and just kind of make a really nonsensey comparison and slate the other guys. Even if we did it accurately, like legal would be all over. Hey, you use this person's brand and this company's brand that they have trademarked and. I think there's a there's a lot of headaches for that kind of stuff. A lot of approvals that would have to happen. Yeah, so, and they kind of, but that's a gap. The, that's, you that's, show them the search volume, and you're like, yeah, but it gets it gets like eight thousand searches a month, and they're just like, no. <laughs> but then sites like G two Crowd come in with their like ratings and reviews and comparisons, and you know they they fill that gap. They fill that need. Um, mm. Things like Tech Target, Wikipedia, they're killing the informational content in most of the spaces that we uh, compete in. For instance, it's interesting. Um, but yeah, I imagine having legal um, definitely constricts your strategic choices on things like that. So oh, for some of it, for others, it's just. <laughs> they see a lot of organic search traffic and they maybe go, uh, I'm okay with the volume of traffic that I'm getting. The traffic's converting well. Well, of course it is. It's all branded traffic. But the funnel's kind of, I'm not going to say always because we, we do a lot of stuff really well. Uh, but in general, larger sites ignore a lot of the funnel or they think they have the funnel because they made this, here's information about my product. That's That's top of funnel, right? Uh, because it's information, it's um, um, it's awareness <laughs> even. Well, I suppose you feed your funnel from different sources. Um, yeah, like you know, I mean, IBM. I'm assuming has a a pretty uh, strong advertising budget. Yeah. Uh, I would... So I mean, that that puts things into the that makes people do branded searches when they see the uh, and obviously a lot of PR stuff around. Um, your AI technology and stuff that gets press coverage. So that's another, so I guess organic isn't always the primary channel that originally drove people to the organic searches about you. But it's a great channel. <laughs> it, well, obviously we all, obviously everyone <laughs> watching this is gonna agree. <laughs> no, so like, uh... It's a little interesting because one, hey, recover the links, but two, then like link stuff together. Internal links are hard. Uh, you know, for for a site that's on just like a WordPress or a Drupal, uh, there's a plugin, there's a module related posts of some kind every time. Uh, when dealing with more like multiple CMS systems, multiple JavaScript frameworks. Uh, honestly, I think the best index of our site is google.com. So when we're, when we're actually looking for internal link opportunities, we kind of have to just Google what's out there, see what to find out like what's on the pages. Because crawling our site too, like we can do it. It's expensive at that level. Um, think close to 200 million pages we have to crawl through to to get it all yeah that's uh it's a hefty project but internal links that that's a big win um if you're out there and you know you you've got a lot of blog content or a lot of pages link that stuff together it's it's honestly people don't realize how huge of a win that is yeah, I, I agree with that 100%. And we've, we've had a few speakers on um, agreeing with that today and, and talking about different strategies for grouping the content. And, um, although I wouldn't like to think about trying to group two million, how much did you say, 200 million pages or something? I, well, I think uh, that's across like 7,000 products. So Yeah, I, I wouldn't like to um, 
get in charge of that particularly. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, everyone's talking about that today. And, um, and, I, and I said at the time, the people who have been around since you could actually check the page rank on things and remember properly how page rank actually works. Um, it's a lot clearer to you why you should be doing that. I think people have started convincing themselves domain authority is a thing by itself, not just an artifact of the way page rank moves if everything's linked together. <laughs> um, so like the, you could get people testing weird things um, and then saying, well, domain authority doesn't work, so I did this test. It's like, well, it never worked. Uh, it, things always had to be linked together internally properly to pass page rank between things in your site. So um, people, have, I like a lot of people have lost their way on some of those concepts over the years. Yeah, it, and I think part of that is silo structures have become, I don't know, <laughs> everyone's like, oh, build a silo, blah, blah, blah. I keep everything in the silo. That's wrong. I, but that's how people picture a website. Like they, they, let's see. They view it as a nice yeah, yeah. and easy kind of thing. Like, hey, I got this page and it links to these and this over here, blah, blah, blah. The reality is more like, let's see, I've got an article on this actually. This is about like visualizing the crawl data. So let me find one. That'll work. Every one of these lines is a link between pages. And every every dot, it's hard to see the dots in that one, but here are the dots. Uh, every dot there is a page. Every line is a link between the pages. So it's not all like super straightforward. It's it's not hey, this links to here and, you know, all these link to each other and but they don't link across. That's that's not reality. The reality is, hey, you talk about something you should probably link to the other thing. Like, is it relevant? Do you care? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, that came up earlier, like in terms of if it's relevant then you should be linking and you shouldn't be deleting all your external links um, and all kinds of things like that. Um, I mean, back uh, back in the day, we used to just call silos organizing your site in some sensible groupings. Um, and then silos got kind of coined as a funky term. And now we have content clusters being used and all, all yeah. kinds of things. But it's, it's all just um, skinning the same cat. You're just talking about grouping your site sensibly and linking between things that make sense. Just change the name of a thing every few years. It's generally what happens. So All before, the before silos, nice. they were pyramids. I want to say. Yeah, yeah, there was, there were, yeah, there were definitely more pyramid pictures before silos. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, a silo is really just a pyramid turned into boxes. It still looks kind of pyramidy to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm just. I don't know. I think it was. I don't know who changed it at the time, but it's always interesting when. People do that. Uh, call I, 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 call I've, given up on, uh, I've given up on refusing to call them silos just on time for people to start calling them content clusters. So I yeah. seem to permanently be a name change behind. But um, it's interesting the pictures you've shared, they, they all kind of have some funky pattern shapes, though. So I guess there is a, from each one of the sort of different, I'm, I'm assuming they're different products or different topics. It does kind of have a pyramid structure towards the middle. Just yeah, not, uh, not well, one the, pyramid for the whole site, but there are kind of a there is a kind of pyramid feel to it for each individual um, spoke, I guess, on the one that's on screen at the minute. Yeah, it sort of should be that way uh, for the most part. Like this was actually, a, if I remember right, a legal site, and each one of these were like the different uh, niches that they cover. So like divorce and. Um, wow, well, I can't even think of what attorneys do. Uh, traffic tickets, maybe, and defense or whatever. I don't, I don't particularly remember. I, I what thought they, they all. I thought I thought they all did um, injury law now. 
for yeah, the, the, all personal for injury. Them. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> So that was the only sector left. I think some towns have hundreds now. Um, it must be a very uh, lucrative but competitive field um, because there seems to be uh, a lot of law firms now. Yeah, and in general, like these get kind of clustered together because those pages typically link with each other more, which is, hey, kind of how it should be, but it doesn't mean that you know, maybe the personal injury thing is, uh, I don't know, talking about, <laughs> I don't have a good example for this. Let's say they're talking about something related. Does that mean I shouldn't link from this to this? Mm. No. And I, I think there's still a lot of SEOs that get that wrong. They're like, I only link within the silo. Well, the silos will, I guess, sort of form, like you said, just because that's natural. You're you're more interlinked with these, but it doesn't necessarily mean you shouldn't link to the other ones. I think a lot of that guidance, though, is aimed at um, people that are more beginner level, sort of building their first affiliate site and stuff like that. And it's kind of a rule of thumb that if they follow, they won't get themselves into too horrific trouble. Whereas if they haphazardly link all over the place, um, their picture might just look like a big blob. <laughs> and there's no kind of... Um... Does that matter? Actually, there's another one here that's really... I would consider this one really well interlinked. Like, everything here was sort of related. Uh, but this site in general did a great job, like, cross-linking between different things. Uh, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that's bad at all. Yeah, I guess I, I don't really know the answer. I mean, that's kind of how um, my sites would have looked um, back in the day. I tended to just interlink when, like, when the content on the page was to do with the other thing. I linked to the other thing regardless of where it was. Or um, these days, I tend to more link to things that are within the same group of pages but not exclusively so i guess mine would look more like the first picture now but yeah. that, that's again i guess like the judgment does it actually make sense uh because eventually like if you do <laughs> link to everything eventually you start looking like wikipedia where like every other word is a link and that's probably not a great user experience but i, I wouldn't typically worry as long as it's not like distracting design wise, uh, I wouldn't typically worry about like, it honestly makes sense to link, um, you know, where, where you are talking about this stuff. Like Wikipedia makes sense, uh, at least for Wikipedia. I, I wouldn't typically want to see that many links on one of my sites, but uh, if, if it was all uh, relevant, then maybe. Yeah, I mean, I think Wikipedia is different because obviously people expect um, an encyclopedia to explain all the terms that they use on the page, whereas, um, you know, IBM isn't expected to explain the word database necessarily and have a link to an article that explains database every time they mention it, whereas Wikipedia is expected to link to the database article every time they mention the word database because it's a different purpose, isn't it, when it's a yeah. knowledge resource rather than a site that can probably assume people that uh, should be reading the site should know what a database is. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, if not, I feel bad for the sales uh, sales team that has to take the uh, take the lead from random person who doesn't know what a database is and wants to buy something. <laughs> That'll be a fun call. Yeah, but uh, I mean, I guess that could happen. Uh, <laughs> but uh, hopefully someone has progressed them down the funnel a little bit. Mm. They learned what a database was. I, you know, that's, uh, that's an interesting topic too. Like we, we, if we don't have one, I, I don't know the answer to this. We probably should have like a what is database page because that person searching that now, like to learn what a database is, eventually might be the one looking for a product. 
And at that point, like if we answered their question and their next question and their next question, were there like every time they search, who are they likely to buy from? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I might agree the page should exist. I just don't know if you should link to it every time you have the word yeah. database on your site. Um, whereas Wikipedia probably should. Yeah. Do we have any questions in the chat by chance? Um, BB's just saying um, silos hurt my brain. Um, she likes the SEO art you shared in this search engine land post, and um, she's pleased that you're agreeing with her preference to kind of just do this internal linking naturally. Yeah. You know, I, th I think with a site as big as IBM, though, you wouldn't have a choice but to take a kind of natural, common sense approach. Because if you started trying to break literally every page down into a strict group and then fix it so they only link to themselves and they had a certain group of pages that filtered it, it would be... Uh... Yeah, like if we tried to link from cloud or from every page to the cloud page, well, that's, you know, four million times practically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, imagine trying to do the spreadsheet for which page was going to link to which and then being the... Uh... Being the intern that had to go through the that 3.8 million pages and pop the uh, four links per page in or whatever you decided to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, when will you be finished? Uh, 2032. And uh, but I go back to university in uh, six months. So <laughs> good luck with that. That's, that sounds about right, actually. Uh, and I, I honestly wish it was easy enough that we could just go pop it in. Uh, it is in some cases, I guess, depending on like how controlled the things are, but a lot of them, like main pages are pretty much like, let's wait for the refresh of that page in six months before we make any changes to it kind of deal. Mm. So that's always, uh, you know, I'm gonna say painful, but it's also, there's so much other stuff to work on that, uh, you know, there, there's always gonna be blockers, there's always gonna be things to take longer uh but there's there's other things to do in the meantime so yeah i imagine there's uh there's never a uh perfect site that has that many pages um bb's asking uh what would it take to get a link from ibm i, I guess probably she'd have to donate like uh <laughs> 10, 10 million to the charity and wait two months for you to get corporate sign off before you can even give her the link so <laughs> probably not going to be probably not going to be plus ev for you BB, but <laughs> It's funny because I it seems like about every other week now someone messages me that they see someone selling a link on like IBM.com, uh, you know, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, through email, just get a lot of these and they're like, here's the pricing, you know, like I'll give it to you for half that. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, if legal is listening, that was a joke, fully a joke. Uh, we have uh, like everyone else, honestly, some user generated content sections where anyone can go do it. It doesn't mean it's going to stay there because it's not, it's going to get cleaned up. Uh, but it's, you know, maybe not going to get cleaned up tomorrow, but it will get cleaned up. Cause it's just uh, at a certain point, it's impossible to police everything, you know, especially when there's old forums or old blogs with comments enabled. And there's, there's basically like, not not necessarily someone watching them as as close as maybe they should so it's more like here's a project every other week to go clean this stuff up kind of deal yeah yeah um well i mean even i mean people were uh, you know there's any way you can get a contributor account um or there's any administration done by low level, low paid staff is a vulnerability for, you know, when people are prepared to pay, you know, well, people, are, I mean, people are prepared to pay up to $10,000 for some of these ultra premium links. You know, if you've got part of your team overseas making $5 an hour or something and someone offers them $2,000 to pop a link on some old section of, that isn't looked at by anyone. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean the banks have the same problem with outsourcing um, 
you know, a lot of um, data was vulnerable to leakage from um, call center staff abroad and stuff like that because of the the pay that people were prepared to make for the data wouldn't wouldn't seem particularly exciting for the risk of jail if you were the original UK based call center staff, but the extra cost, um, the, sorry, the, the, the relative extra value of it to someone who's paid 15% and with a much lower chance of going to jail makes it suddenly effective to make that offer. Um, I'm not saying IBM staff overseas are vulnerable or in particular or at all, but that's what they're. That's what these people that are doing these pitches are looking to prey upon. Well, I you mean, just have to, it's not you even just have to get like, one person replies to your email and takes the offer, and then you can you can get your offer up and start pitching SEOs, and and then you just need two or three of them to give you ten thousand dollars, and your your week of spamming has been very lucrative. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say it's not even necessarily employees, but uh, everyone no, no, out there is going to have vulnerabilities, whether it's here's an open forum, here's open blog comments, here's uh, a text input field that like supposedly doesn't accept any kind of formatting, but HTML works. So, hey, there's a link there now. I know uh, back in my agency days, I had like 20, I think it was 28 different ways I could get a link on Google. Um, so it's it's every website out there. You you can pretty much look at any major website and find a dozen or more ways to actually get a link from them if you want. Yeah, I mean, like the university sites, there's tons of student newsletters and blogs and things which are all vulnerable, and loads of people selling links there, and it's pretty much everywhere. Um, there's vulnerabilities. Um, yeah, actually, so like I, was, I, wasn't, I wasn't picking on I wasn't picking on IBM or banks. I was just thinking of examples of where vulnerabilities exist, typically within big organizations, and um, straight up emailing loads of people, offering them a bribe is something that I know happens. People do it. Um, we don't get involved at all in any of the sort of in inverted commas big site link building, um, which requires you to. Um, well, it doesn't require you to do anything of the sort. You could do real PR and get links from a newspaper properly, but um, I mean, a lot of people just do it through trying to find someone corrupt or a user-generated content section, and then off they go. Hey, Garrett. What's up? <clears throat> uh, a couple of quick questions. Um, did we reach out to Clint Butler? I, I, I don't know. I was only loosely involved in the pitching. Um, what else have we got? Um, BB's clients don't pay for links, though. So you have to give her the link for free, I'm afraid. Is that all right? <laughs> <laughs> if she finds one of the ways to do it, I mean. Yeah, look, he's given you enough tips about all their vulnerabilities. I mean, just, you know, come on. <laughs> Seriously, like, people just need to, I don't know, if they really want it, they could just get more creative because every site's going to have stuff where you can actually get them. Uh, I remember actually once there was a <laughs> probably the most boring niche. Uh, it was an uh, ortho Wikipedia. Um, crap. It's too early in the morning. I haven't had enough coffee. You guys have been up like 24 hours, so I know you're off. You know it. But, uh, yeah, I've, I've had too much coffee. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to sleep now. I, I tried to balance it out with a bottle of wine during the uh, during the 24 hours, but. Uh... It doesn't seem to have worked. I, I managed, like I say, during the break, a quick 15-minute nap, which is why we've managed to have a conversation at all, I think. so. Yeah. I, uh, I remember now. I was an oral surgeon. And like I was looking through um, the, like link opportunities for them. And there was like this big oral surgeon uh, organization, like their, their main organization. And then they had like individual profiles for like every oral surgeon. So there were links there, but then they weren't indexed. Because on their main site, they actually just had everything behind uh, behind like a, a, a search form. So there were no internal links to any of the surgeon pages. It was just, here's a search and then 
nothing. So there's nothing for Google to crawl. There were like five of these things indexed total out of the tens of thousands of little <laughs> search engines. And it was as simple as like building a link to that page to get it indexed. And hey, I got a page on this major site now. It's niche relevant and uh, just overlooked by everyone else except for, I guess, five other potential oh, SEOs. Oh, I remember um, one of the I won't out them on the charity show. If this was SEO on Mast, I would uh, I, I would name them. But uh, we're being we're not being mean spirited in the interest in the interest of charity. We're uh, not mentioned. But one of the big names in the kind of grey hat space um, selling information to um, less knowledgeable wannabe grey hats um, did he uh, he was teaching them to do this scam where you could show your clients the awesome links you could get. So he would take, um, like he would take IBM site and he would uh, run the site through a crawler and find um, just naked domain type links that were broken. And then he would check to see if the domains had expired years ago or whatever, buy the domain and then 301 it to his agency site and say, hey, look, I, I can get links from IBM. I can get links from this university, look at all these sites I've, I've been able to get links to. I'm you know, an expert link builder, so you should give me uh, $2,000 a link to handle your... <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there's still plenty of people that will pay for that. Because I, uh, I think people don't believe that Google drops the value when the domain is dropped now. So I still see a lot of people you know, build the PBNs and stuff. Um, I'd, I'd say it's hit or miss whether they recover the value or not. But if they do a straight redirect or something like that, yeah, they're, not, they're probably not counting any of that. Well, he wasn't doing it to uh, get the value of the link. He was doing it just to show up. To sell it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so he could sell himself as, uh, as a guru. It was kind of funny. He sold the uh, course he was selling on that basis as well. He was like, I'll show you how you can get these links. And then he, inside the course, um, I, I spend a lot of time following the scammers, um, which unfortunately sometimes involves giving them small amounts of money for science. Um, and once you're inside the course, he's like, ha, here's how you do it, the same way I just tricked you. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, it's kind of interesting what they were up to. Um, but yeah, I follow a lot of these guys just to see what's going on in the, uh, in the world, weird underworld of uh, hack links and misleading clients just so you can see what what stuff people are being misled with otherwise we have nothing to talk about on the show i guess when we're trying to unmask seo we've got to uh, got to pay 97 dollars here and there for science so we've got nothing to share with people what everyone's up to so and i think you just got a new subscriber i'm sold i want to hear about this <laughs> Um, we do lots of rants and uh, talking about uh, Moz, though, so you know, some of it's less balanced than others. You know, we maybe have a bit of a bee in our bonnet about a, a certain former Moz uh, employee. Um, we like Sarah Bird, though. We think she's doing a wonderful job since she uh, got rid of the problem. Yeah. Um, but yeah, BB's telling us we haven't failed and. Uh, uh, I, I don't feel bad, Garrett. 90 minutes, I had 15 minutes. 15 minutes is still greater than zero, so I, I also failed. So, Oh, well. Even 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 two minutes in the chair is a, a fail on staying awake for 24 hours. So We did it last year. We'll, uh, we'll have to be awake at least 15 to 90 minutes longer next year so we don't, uh, so we make the whole 24. Uh, we were just, I was explaining, um, I was explaining to Patrick at the we'll beginning of the call. Next time. We just couldn't um we just couldn't get enough enough speakers. You know, like last year there was only one small gap, which is the bit we really struggled with. Once once we had people back on for the last few hours, it just kind of ticked by and then it was done. As soon as you get kind of an empty void, it starts getting really difficult. I wish I had said something because just a couple of messages like probably could have filled out the top, the slots. I think a lot of people would be willing to do this uh, for charity and everything. Yeah, I think it'll be easier next year. Um, you know, we had some really uh, top caliber speakers. Um, a lot more people, are, you know, people come back 
from the first year and then we had a whole bunch of new people this year as well i think if we get a nice body of support it'll be easier to to make the magic happen in future years it's only the second year of the event so um we beat last year's fundraising goal so hopefully we can go from strength to strength i think i think it's vin's turn to do the whole 24 hours next year anyway isn't it Garrett? yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Dodged it the first two. Um, BB can't stay awake for 10 minutes of SEO. <laughs> That's lies. You've been here for almost all of it, except for uh, a few hours sleep in the middle. So what do you want to move on to, uh, to next? Any other points you wanted to cover off? Me? No, Patrick. <laughs> um, not unless people really have questions. A lot of, right. a lot any, of what I do folks? is more, yeah. not necessarily like what a lot of people, I guess, would consider the technical stuff. Like, uh, you know, just <laughs> here, I, I, like title tags and that kind of thing. It's more, how is this thing indexed? Uh, why is it indexed in a certain way? So like canonicalization issues and like um, hreflang, not my nightmare if anyone's internationalization. Uh, yeah. Tags breaking all the time, trying to do it across <laughs> like multiple platforms and moving pages and changing pages and URLs all the time. Yeah, I'm glad these are not my problems. <laughs> <laughs> I actually love it. Uh, it's, it's it's a lot of fun. Um, but I don't know if anyone's interested in any of that. So, um, Well, let us know in the chat if you've got any questions around any of that kind of stuff. Um, Tristan says we all look dead or seem dead. <laughs> I think it's too early for me, too late for you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think it's a combination of the two. Um, we did the survive the night, Tristan, but um, we, we failed slightly because uh, I, I had a 15 minute uh, nap during one of the uh, breaks between presenters uh, by mistake. So didn't quite make it through this year, unlike last year, but um, I guess we survived. So, yes. <laughs> um, cool. Well, I don't think there's any more questions coming. I guess just give it a minute in case anyone. Type any in. Um, BB's behind on a uh, link deadline. She's really laying it on thick, selling you on giving her this IBM link just to help her out. <laughs> She's got a deadline and everything to hit. So if you could just uh, throw uh, yeah, it yeah. um, Homepage link would be great. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could use a few of those myself. Well, yeah, yeah I can imagine. <laughs> But no, we really appreciate you coming on, man. If anyone um, wants to uh, chip in five bucks, uh, please do. Um, I haven't got any more stories to read out or uh, anything else, but um, those of you who've watched throughout the day know the great work St. Jude's is doing, some of the new research they're doing, um, some of the lives they've saved, um, and the impact their work's had on the generation after some of their breakthroughs where Thousands of future people around the world have been saved as once revolutionary treatments go mainstream. It's really amazing work. And if you're watching this on replay, still chuck $5 in. Um, the fundraising's open for six months after the event. So $5 anytime will be hugely appreciated. Um, not for us, but for all the speakers who've given up their time to come on and share all this great knowledge. I've learned tons, um, hopefully. Hopefully you've all learned tons as well during the uh, during the 24 hours, and I'm sure watching it one at a time on on replay will will learn even more because we're about to concentrate 100% on just the one topic. So it was some hugely valuable stuff going to go out. Um, thank you to everyone who's already supported. Thank you to everyone who's been with us for most of the 24 hours. There's been some people like BB in the chat um, for pretty much the whole day. Um, we really appreciate you because it helps us uh, helps us keep going with the comments and um, questions for the speakers because we sometimes run out of things to 
Um, I mean, Patrick and I seem to have managed to have a pretty good chat without any assistance, but uh, sometimes we run out of ideas to what to talk to the speakers about and have a chat about. So it all just makes it uh, all just makes it fantastic and a good experience. Um, don't let Garrett's uh, appearance like he might pass out now <laughs> deceive you. <laughs> it's been a great event and uh, um, I've really enjoyed it and appreciate all the speakers. So thank you, Patrick, and, and everyone else. Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys for having me and uh, good luck with the thing. Everyone, please donate. Uh, it's really, really a great cause. I'm a big supporter of St. Jude's. And I guess if you have any questions on the replay, just send send Patrick a tweet or something about anything he uh, discussed or mentioned that he would like to take questions on. I'm sure if you've uh, made a donation, he'll give you some of his expertise and help you out. Absolutely. Cool. Um, BB's reminding us the uh, finish is one hour away. It's 57 minutes, BB. Well, because I fell asleep, I have to run the 10-year-old to school quick. I didn't wake anybody up. No. <laughs> well, I don't think anyone wants to sit and listen to me talk for an hour. So um, if anyone wants to come on and talk, uh, we will continue. Otherwise, this will be the end, I guess, if Garrett's leaving, because I haven't got any material to do a a solo show for an hour. No, I'm going to run. I'll see you guys later. Yeah, All see right, you later, Patrick. Thanks, man. <laughs> so any, anyone want to join? Or is everyone going back to work? Yeah, I think um, speakers, including ourselves, are in for uh, over half of the uh, the money raised. So hopefully, the replays will uh, help the uh, help the viewing public catch up and move into the number one position. Well, should we just call it a? Yeah, let's. Uh, unfortunately, we uh, we had a we had a slot here for a speaker, but unfortunately, due to a family situation, um, they weren't able to, to make it. Obviously, uh, thoughts go out to them, and hopefully, uh, everything sorts itself out. Um, so, I don't think uh, there's any value in. Uh, me talking to you for an hour just to uh, wind the clock down. Um, I haven't got anything uh, anything new to say. Thank you everyone so much for um, contributing. Um, thanks, Andrew. Um, thanks, BB. Thanks, Duoq. Um, who else is in the chat at the minute that's around? Thanks, Tristan. Um, thanks, Garrett's face. Uh, <laughs> Uh, thanks, Jason. Thanks, Mark. Um, I think I've got everyone that's been around in the last uh, half hour or so. Appreciate you being here at the end. Um, I think next year is going to be a great event as well. I think the replays are going to be fantastic. So sign up on 24hoursofseo.com. You'll get early access to the replays. All the slide decks will be available to download. Um, if you signed up last year, um, you'll get the email as well. You don't need to sign up again. Um, you'll get, and obviously, if you sign up now, you can instantly get access to all of last year's replays and slide decks as well. So um, it's going to become quite a huge resource over the years, um, every year adding a whole new bunch of speakers and slides. So thank you very much and uh, yeah. good night, um, even though it's 2 p.m. I'll probably get lunch first and then go to sleep. <laughs> If I can even sleep now. Yep. Thanks again, everybody. And uh, see you next time. See you next time.